welcome to our kind of podcast show thing. Yeah. Where basically, we're going to talk about all the stuff that we missed in the episode. We got a lot we, of good stuff for you. We, <laughs> it's going to be pretty funny. Uh, basically, our opinions that we didn't get to say in our official episode. Because right. we made a video about the brand new Nissan Z. Beautiful car. And that's coming from a muscle car guy. All right. I am I'm a muscle car fan. I love him so much. But that car is beautiful and probably drives great. The power, it's all there. I love it so much. But speaking yeah. of which, we have a Z here ourselves. Specifically, this man's Z right here. It is my pride and joy. Yeah. It's the it's 2003 Nissan 350Z. Like, you know, 300 horsepower. Cold air intake. Because... It wouldn't be a car without one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All of uh, our naturally aspirated cars will have a cold air intake. It's guarantee. just a fact. My Mustang has one. It's uh, adds like three horsepower on a good day. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know what? It probably adds like from five to ten. So. Yeah, possibly. I don't know. We haven't dynoed it. Uh, no. Neither do I. Possible video in the future. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> no, no, no. We oh, dino well, my Mustang to you know, find out how sad it is. That might be interesting. That would be. I would cry I'd a little be bit. Sad I'd be like, for you. Oh no! <laughs> not my, <laughs> not my Mustang. Yeah, well. But um, we won't, I don't do that to you. We, yeah, no. Save me the pain. But it's a beautiful car. The Z Touring, by the way. Yeah, so leather, it's got the heated seats. And heated leather, seats. You know, it's got. Automatic for daily driving. Which, uh, automatic. And that's, I, I like I like being able to not. Have that being to, like, said, think I mean, about it too much. Driving. Whenever okay, whenever we're okay. in the car, we always do put it in its little manual mode though. Yeah, I, and that I'll, is pretty fun. You just kind of like flip it over, and you can free shift, and it's really nice because you can keep it in whatever gear for as long as you want. Um, that's that's really nice. Yeah, that's it's a good pretty feature. nice. It is a great feature. A whole lot of fun. You know, rev it up a little bit. Even mm-hmm. that's okay. Yeah. First off, revving uh, revving up your vehicle. Terrible for your motor. Don't do it too much. Yeah. Also, you look stupid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Honestly, that being said, I'm guilty of it. If you think it's cool, um, good for you. I good, guess. I yeah. Good for you. I don't you. know why you would think it was cool. Personally, I, I think, think it's so. like a little cool. I, well, I, that's because my car is kind of loud. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. My car is kind of you know like oh hey he's a muscle car driver. Look at me. That's that's basically the yeah. You can hear the power. Yeah, it's got pops and bangs on downshifts. It's actually but like not. I think it's not not, not nice bad thing. pops and bangs. It's just because no. the air kind of no, compresses weirdly and you're right. But it, it's it's great sounding car. I love it. It's also a stick shift, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only thing I've got on Dave. Other than that, he's he's yeah. It's uh, but it's a whole lot of fun to drive. But you know what? That's a different topic. Let's stay on topic. And talk about the new Z. Our Brand ideas. New Z. You know what? Since you're a Z driver, not the 400Z, because that would that be, would that would just make that, too much that sense. Would make too much Nissan. sense. Nissan. Let's call it just the Z, which yeah. honestly I'm used to. By I now. guess okay. Three, Nissan Z. 3.0 liter engine, and I guess that makes sense because the 350 it's 3.5, so it's yeah. 350, and that kind of makes sense. But and then you also have like 370. That's 3.7. Yeah. And this one is a 3.0 turbocharged, but. Do you think they? I think they could have had a better name for it than just the Z. Like, in my in my I opinion, for, at least, I think it's fine. It's a culmination of yeah. all of the, the cars, yeah. um, but it could have been it could have been a little better. Like I, I, I feel like it would just would have been so satisfying if it was four hundred Z. Yeah, because you had three fifty, three seventy, and then four hundred. Four hundred. That's just I mean four zero zero. It's really nice. Really yeah, nice name. but. I mean, you know, it's uh, it is what it. Honestly, I, I'm I'm so used to it by now. Yeah, I, I've it's I've fine. heard it so many times. Yeah, um, the Nissan Z. I uh, I think most enthusiasts probably won't even care. Yeah, so. it's no matter what, it's a revolutionary car. Yeah. Uh, it's a great car. You know, uh, six speed automatic, or yeah, no, not six speed. No, 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 no. That is false. That is that is hundred percent false. Six speed manual. manual. Nine speed automatic. Nine speed automatic. That Nine speed automatic for babies, by the way. If you buy the automatic <sighs> transmission version. What if I bought it? What if I just wanted to daily drive a car and I got You it? can daily drive a man I daily drive a manual. Well, it's fine. It's not as good as fuel efficiency and Oh no. My car gets like thirteen miles to the gallon, but we don't talk about it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, especially with the gas crisis these days. Like, yeah. it's just it's getting more and more expensive. Well, to, like even just drive. Like, we we live we live kind of in the south, and it's it's not as bad here as in no. other places it's, like California. Yeah. Like that, they're they're seeing gas prices like yeah. four, five, six bucks a gallon, and mm-hmm. it's that's kind of absurd in my opinion. 
Um, but don't they also make more money out there though? Like, but they do. Yeah, wage? generally they. they it all equals out. The point is. But still, it doesn't matter. Like they, that's just that's too much. It's too much. For I just want to disclose: we're not politicians. However, gas prices are uh, they're pretty high for what they are. Yeah. Um, but the yeah, that's just kind of how it is. But I, I don't know. I feel like the. But okay, here's the, form, the thing. Or I almost said four hundred Z. The regular Z. I feel like you have to get good as long as you're not like yeah. over revving it and you uh, if you drive it right. I think yeah, if you, you drive it right, good gas mileage. Um, the, okay, this kind of helps like lead into what we're next going to yeah, talk yeah. about. The turbos replacing the naturally aspirated yeah. engines for fuel efficiency, for better power from smaller engines. Yeah. from I guess like it's better for the environment. Um, but it, I mean, that's <laughs> is it? Is it really though? Is it? Is it really? <laughs> I don't know. It just again. I'm not a politician or an environmentalist scientist. Uh, environmentalist I just, scientist. Is that environmental. Environmental. Environment. Envi- it'd be environmental in- science. Scientist. Enviro science. Is that a thing? I'm not a nature scientist. However, I do know that uh, engines, like okay, so V8s, right? They're kind of now being replaced with turbo sixes, which I don't, most of them are all gone by now. Yeah. Well. Like the they're naturally aspirated ones. Yeah. Like they, they're switching to um, turbocharged V6 engines because of yeah. all of those reasons. And personally, that that's not really something that I'm excited about yeah, because yeah. I love the sound of good V8 regardless of me yeah. not being like a super big um, fan of, of like the, the muscle car like like uh, scene. I think it's I think it's a good it's a good market. But yeah. It's and I, I, I really do like the things that it brings to the table. Um, I mean, the only reason why I've like said the only reason why I said that is because I have a Z, and that's kind of like my pride and joy. That's what I, that's what I love. You know, that's that's what I started out on. I haven't had like a ton of experience with muscle cars, and I'm sure I, I could be one over to the muscle car side. Like, but I'm saying like if I had an opportunity to buy like a Mustang GT or the new Z, I'd probably go for the new Z. Just yeah. being 100 percent honest here. I would too. No, I would too. You would. Yeah, I would. Oh. Look, just because I'm a muscle car fan does not mean that I see a new, like, a good car when I see one. And I would definitely take that the new Z over the new Mustang GT. Yeah. First off, styling. New Z looks great. Yeah, it I does. love it so much. Now, this is where Dave and I kind of, like, disagree. Um, I don't really like the new S550 Mustangs. feel like they're a little bit too European. I like European cars. That's why I like them. He really likes European cars. I mean, they don't, they're not bad looking cars, but like compared to what I really feel like was kind of the the golden era of modern Mustangs, like from, it was, I think it was 2010 to 2014. Those uh, body styles of cars, the S197s, uh, well, I guess the S197s also goes back to 2005. Yeah. So yeah. pretty much, so uh, since 2005 to 2014, those kind of three different body styles of Mustangs, especially from like the 2010 to 2012, and then the 2013 to 2014, those two body styles especially I really enjoy. Well, mainly because I'm also the owner of <laughs> that yeah. body style. However, um, still, it's like I just like those body styles better. Yeah. And the other thing is the power, Dave. Oh yeah, the power. There was a bit of an issue on the. Is it the 2021 models? They lost like 10 to 20 horsepower. I don't remember exactly. They dialed back the horsepower number from around 480 to around 460, Mm -hmm. which was. I mean, I mean, it's 20 horsepower. You're not going to feel it every day, but it's also like, why would you do that? Um, It it just doesn't really make sense. Like usually, cars will gain power. They won't lose power. But that seems to be a thing that's happening. Like. Even um, some of the newer newer cars that are coming out, I've I've seen many of them actually like go down in power. Like even if it's just a few horsepower, um, they do it for fuel efficiency or for um, just cost cutting or something yeah. like that. And it's just it's kind of a practice that I think should be dropped. Um, but I digress. Yeah, I mean it's a uh, uh, yeah uh, I don't know, but yeah going back to the original debate, I would still take the Z. Because the, uh, first off, the turbos, man. I really like the, I think the turbos work well. Some cars to just, they should just go ahead, put a V8 in it, I think. All right. Uh, where there should be maybe a, um, you know, where there, excuse me, where there is a turbo six, there should be a V8. I feel like the turbo six works so well for the Nissan, 
the Nissan Z because they all they've always had a V6 in them. And, yeah, I mean it's the uh, thing. Yeah, I mean it's a, a V6 is for a car it's of a this car. size. It's plenty enough of power. Yeah, plenty of fun. I mean, you know, if this car had a V8, it's I don't want to say undrivable because it, you can still drive be, it, but it just it'd be it wouldn't be able to put down most of the power because exactly in the rear wheels it would spin up um, even more than it already does. Like it, I already get some wheel spin uh, with the V6. I have rear wheel drive, 100 percent of the power at the back, and um, traction yeah, control off. traction control off. Oh my goodness, that's <laughs> that's almost a, a, that's like kind of a nightmare actually. Um, yeah, because if you're not planning on drifting, don't ever turn the traction control off in this car. Um, bad idea. <laughs> yeah, as I've learned. Um, anyway, uh, we actually were out driving around today. Ooh, and oh, yeah. we saw a really, really cool car from a distance. And I was like, huh, I wonder what that is. I wonder if we should go see it. It was like, it's just parked at a gas station. We don't see a lot of, like, um, exotic cars here. We, we no, don't live in any areas don't. where... That's, that's a common thing. Like if we lived in Miami or central London or somewhere in California, yeah, we'd see them all the time no, and it probably wouldn't no. be as big of a deal. But here where we live, it's just uh, yeah, it's not something you normally see. So we, we decided to get a closer look and it turns out it was a Ferrari Testarossa. And those cars, just let me tell you, in person, they look amazing. Yeah. I absolutely love the look of that, of that car. Like it's, it's so classic and and nice and just reminds me of an amazing era of cars that yeah. uh, like Italian sports cars and you know it had the windows down and it was just looking very amazing cool. I mean very yeah. very very good car um, yeah um, they're running for around $120,000 uh, right now which I mean in today's market 120 grand I mean people seem to be spending that all on all kinds of cars like I mean yeah. like there's dealer markups that are Jeez. Getting close to 120 on all types of cars that should not be, and I think there was like uh, the new C8, and I'm, I've seen yeah. some of those sell for C8. around uh, 120, it's and that's crazy. yeah. They had originally quoted like 50, like from their original like uh, press release. They're like, oh yeah, it was going to be kind of an affordable, almost exotic type car. And now it's going up to 120. It's yeah. like, if 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 I have a choice between a Testarossa or a C8, it's like. That's kind of a hard thing because the Testarossa, I mean, that's a that's a classic car. That thing's going to continue to go up in value. Whereas this, it's kind of a price bubble. I don't think I was I'm ever going to buy it. Um, like any any cars that are currently marked up because of that uh, that huge huge price gap that is between the the original sticker and the current asking yeah. price. I'm not. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's that's crazy. But it that Testarossa crazy. was just a. A beautiful car. Yeah, it was great to good. see. Uh, it was we met we met the guy. The guy the was awesome. he was so it was he was so funny. He was he was a cool guy. Um, but yeah, just a red. We don't know exactly now. I, I'm uh, illiterate when it comes to Italians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he basically the only thing he knows is V8 go vroom. V8 go vroom and um, and uh, it was just such a beautiful looking car. Uh, now I think the Testarossa's. I think that's how you pronounce that. That's Testarossa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah Testarossa. Okay, so I think that ran from was it eighty five to ninety six? You said. Uh yeah, or somewhere maybe, it was it was 1980s, nineteen eighties nineteen to nineteen nineties that kind of range. So, yeah, but it was a great car, kind of kind of a reflection of the time. I feel like. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it was great. Yeah. It was. Just it was, fun it to was see. a good. It was a good spot. Um. I I enjoy like being able to get like up close and personal with those cars, being mm -hmm. able to like see them and. Um, talk to the owners and stuff like that. It's it's always great. Um, Let me see what's on the list. Here. Oh yeah, next on the list. Uh, this was a <laughs> this was a particularly weird one. So last night, uh, Dave went to went to a monster truck event. rally. He went to a monster truck rally. Now we're car guys. Now you know we we enjoy not monster trucks. Not the trucks are I mean, cool. Yeah. Like trucks I mean, are cool. I, I, I like enjoy a, a good. I like a good Toyota Tacoma or F one fifty or F three fifty. F three fifty. That F three fifty turbo. They put turbos in those now, right? Gosh, I don't, I don't know. like. Actually, I don't like that. That yeah, particular. No. no, that power plant's kind of. Yeah. 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 And then I'm just not even going to talk about Chevy. Yeah. No, not allowed. No. And then. Dead to us, dude. Ram TRX, very cool. Sick as heck. Yeah, but as far as the monster trucks. Go, <laughs> anyway, back to the monster trucks. 
Um, so I went to this event. I had the opportunity to go to an event um, where I could see monster truck racing, and um, that was just that was an experience. If you ever have the opportunity, if someone asks you or you see it come up in the news or like you know, hey, there's going to be a monster truck rally at this place or whatever. Um, I'd advise you to not go. <laughs> and if you really like that type of thing, that's okay. I mean, that's fine. Um, but personally, I don't think it's cool because the trucks broke. All of them broke. Every single one of them, at least once. And there were, I think, nine or ten trucks there. And it was they, – they could do like um, maybe 30 seconds to a minute and I think two minutes at max driving around. And then they just parked back because – there's just too many things that could go wrong. It could overheat. A part could break. I mean, I saw suspension brakes. I saw brake failure. I saw um, <laughs> like all kinds of just crazy things going wrong that would never go wrong on any rational vehicle. And the one time that I saw a truck did like it did not break down was um, the like the person who happens to have probably the highest budget it was a pretty cool paint scheme actually it was like orange and black and it it, it you know it looked pretty decent for for the um for the build but yeah. it also just i mean even even if it was impressive like how he was able to like you know go up on two wheels and drive around and he was able to do flips and he was able to do all kinds of crazy jumps and he has like the highest budget because he's the um, Guinness Book world record holder for longest jump. I mean, that's cool and all. That's fine. But just the, the entire, like, the, the the audience who came to watch it were just kind of, like, scary and slightly <laughs> concerning. It's scary. I mean, they were all smoking or drinking or, I don't know, they were doing some illegal substances <laughs> behind my back. Like, it was, it was, and they were bringing kids to it, and the kids were just, like, sitting there watching it. So a lot of them didn't have ear protection, and it was extremely loud because it was indoors. And so it just – the whole situation was, was mayhem, and that's what they marketed it as. So if you like mayhem and you like things going wrong and you like to watch kids get bad examples from their parents, um, go ahead. Go to one of those events. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but just overall, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't really an experience I would call – um, fun to watch or, or really that interesting like there's a few things was like, oh well that's cool but I could watch that on YouTube and yeah. my ears wouldn't be like deafened by the end yeah and so yeah I don't know uh, that was just kind of a strange experience hmm. um, yeah but, so well while that was going on I was on eBay Motors. No, oh, yeah, yeah. I was texting him during the thing, and he happened to be on eBay Motors, and he came across something. It was yeah, pretty cool. Like, so totally while I am a fan of the new muscle cars, well, not all of them. I'm not a fan of all of them. Like, or at least what, like Stellantis. Oh, gosh. that's I don't like that. Again, not a new, not uh, a fan of like the super new Mustangs. I don't like it either. Not a fan. No, I mean I like the Mustang. I'm talking about Stellantis now. Oh, man. I thought you they, just admitted defeat there. No, for a no, 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 no. I didn't. Uh, gosh, no. I like the new Mustangs. Yeah. I don't like Stellantis. Let's let's clarify. And then uh, GM killing off the Camaro here pretty soon. I don't like that at all. But yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not alone in that. Yeah. But so a sad. classic muscle car that I think everybody can kind of uh, say, okay, that's pretty cool. The 440 Hemi oh, yeah. Dodge Challenger, right? Dang. Now, I'm not sure on like the particular numbers of said vehicle, but, but it was a lot for the time. Yeah. I'd have was... to give it a Google search. I don't... I used to know. I forgot. Google it for me yeah. real quick. Let me, let me go ahead and Google that. You can start talking about the car. But um, I'm that. like... Uh, I like to just go on like eBay Motors, like Craigslist, Cars.com, Auto Trader. Um, you know, just like the far reaches of the internet to look for these classic muscle cars. And really that, that motor, the 440, I believe it's the six pack they nicknamed it. Yeah. I yeah. think. Big block V8. Um, yeah. It's the, it's a yeah, it's, massive V8. Yeah. You're looking from, uh, for the time, like for the, the yeah. Chrysler B engine, which is, it? yeah, it's That's cast cool. iron, 170 to 425 horsepower at the max output. It's a wet sump. With around 305 to 530 pound feet of torque. So, so wait, let's look at that. Real yeah, quick. that. 
Wow. When it was introduced in 66, 350 horsepower in 66. So I think in the uh, in 66, yeah, yeah, that was when it first. So I'm looking for 1970. So I'm pretty sure I want to say almost 400 horsepower by that point. Now in 1974, 400 horsepower that was like that was pretty nuts. And the Dodge Challenger. Now I understand that every single 13 year old's favorite muscle car is the is like the 68, 69, or 70 Dodge Charger. Yeah. Okay. However, oh, this wait, is what, what we're this is what we're looking at. Oh, sorry. Okay, we I'm got pulling new it numbers. New numbers. New numbers. Okay. So Dude, um, I'm looking nice at there. yeah. yeah I'm looking RT. at one right now. It's fully restored at seventy thousand dollars, um, which is <laughs> a lot more than <laughs> out of my budget. Orig- it was more than it was originally. Um, that is not MSRP. It was like double double <laughs> MSRP or something crazy like that. So let's see. Um, this car had a 440 cubic inch V8. Yep. We're back, and with more food than last time. Because you know what? We decided we were a little hungry and, and kind of bored. But now we're back, and we left off talking about the 440. So, to make a, a long story short, I find this 440 Challenger, or well, <laughs> what's left of this 440 Challenger, I should say. Because she had seen some days, and... Uh, Body's all messed up, and, but the the motor was like intact, and everything else was pretty much. So I um I pretty much there was a decision almost made at that point because it was going for about four grand. And now here's the thing: the body wasn't like terrible though; it was in pretty good condition. So if you had to say out of ten, like out of 10, ten being like brand new and oh. one being like it's junkyard, it's like a like a, like a three. That's not bad. No, maybe like a 1.5. Oh, ooh. ooh <laughs> one five. It didn't, it didn't have any wheels on it. it didn't, not that it even needed it. You wouldn't be able to drive it anyway. I know. I'd rather just buy it. Still had the seats. I'd rather have a Beater Z. In fact, mine was 2,500. <laughs> mm. So that puts it in perspective there. And mine was completely, like, it was fully running. And it was not ooh, nearly as beat up. Drop some pop in there. So no, this popcorn is good, though. Yeah. yeah. It relates to the 440 Hemi. Uh, the Plymouth GTX. Now, you know, Chrysler uh, owned Plymouth there. Well, like, associated, you know. Oh, basically, a whole lot of spillover from Chrysler into um, Plymouth. Hence, the 440 made it into a couple of GTXs. Yeah. Now, let me say, the GTX is, like, kind of an underrated muscle car. It's not exactly, I mean, for big muscle car buffs, it's known, but to the average car joyer, it's not like a very well-known vehicle. And it is maybe one of the best looking muscle cars made it does look ever. Good. I will admit it looks very good. Stunning. Yeah. So it's, it's probably uh, one of my favorite muscle cars and it, it's like relatively, uh, un, not undesirable, but like... It's not very notable. Not many people know about yeah. it, I guess. Um, if you said Plymouth GTX, most people would not know what you were talking about. Yeah. Which is um, kind of sad because it's, it's really nice. It's, yeah, it is. It's a very nice uh, muscle car. Yeah, same same motor, which is really what I'm after, the, the, the 440. So, yeah, that's about my, my eBay Motors experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's... Honestly, these days, um, with cars being... I mean, jacked up the prices like so much. Like, it, yeah. it's it's really hard to find something that is um, both desirable and um, also just something that you would really um, you would really put a lot of time and, and money into. Because most people, when they when they buy cars, they, they'll not they'll not treat them like they used to. Like yeah. the, they'll they'll buy it for either the collectability, so they'll just stow it away or. Something like that. There's very few people that have the resources now to buy cars like that and put all the money needed into them in order to uh, restore them and make them something that is, is really special. Um, and so, I mean, Plymouth GTX is, is no exception. Same thing with the, the 440 Challenger. Yeah. And so if, if we could really be a part of that before that starts going away, everything starts going electric, then... Um, yeah. yeah, I think that's that would be something that we, uh, we would really love to do. Like, yeah. we're, we're thinking about taking on a project car yeah. um, sometime. Uh, so. We were thinking maybe a 
Porsche 944. I really like that car a lot. It's it's a nice car. I um, I like the looks of it. And yeah. It's a Porsche. Um, it's it's just like an overall like um, really really yeah. great round, well rounded car. And then 05 to 09 GT. Or well maybe maybe we could kind of treat ourselves a little bit get an 11 because that's when they put the 5.0s mm, back yeah. in the Mustangs that would be if we could get a 5.0 that, <clears> would, that be would be very good yeah but you know we'll see uh, and then the other was actually another uh, 350Z just one that is not as nice mm. as this because it would see some damage <laughs> yeah we would uh, we would do some some probably some drifting with this some drifting drift. we would do some hydraulic tracking. e-brake yeah yeah we'd do some probably some Drag pulls, no. possibly. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It, we could. Yeah. If, if we put it on the right tires and it was uh, right time, we mm-hmm. could get a, some pretty good runs out of it. Speaking of the Z, I think something we forgot to talk about was, in the video we, we mentioned, Z versus Supra. Been to buy, you know? Mm. Z or Supra? Well, I would say if I'm going for more like practicality, usability, and if I don't want to spend an absurd amount of money, I think the Z is what yeah. I would go for. Mm-hmm. But if I had the money, even though some people would say it's a bandwagon, <laughs> it is a very good car. I'd say it's a BMW. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, I think um, I think at the same time, it, it's it's one of those cars that's it's got some flaws like yeah. whenever you roll down the windows the um, uh, forgot about the wind that. noise is really really bad even at 20 miles an hour um, for the the new um, BMW I mean um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's the the design is not it's not perfect and so Actually. it's like they almost didn't road test some of the capabilities of it that um, the Z um, seems to be going after and so i think as far as the refinement goes the z is probably going to be a little more refined than the supra um when it comes out so it, it kind of comes down to preference um and also um budget so how much yeah. money you're willing to spend i don't know i actually i kind of like the design of the new supra a lot i mean i like the design I'll like ah oh, man i don't know i mean yeah it has less horsepower but a lot of people dog it for for having the uh, the BMW, the engine, the the, the whole is it and the launch control yeah, and la- the, like the whole system UI all the driving anything except for like the body on that car is pretty much a BMW, mm-hmm. right? <clears throat> However, do they break down a lot? I don't know because BMWs. I mean, they're if, not the most reliable cars. The the Toyota the new Super. No, I'm saying I'm saying BMW. BMW oh yeah, no. General. Okay, so the new Super though, now Toyotas are kind of like, that's their thing. They are reliable. They'll never die. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the joke. So, you know, when you, when you, I don't know when you form, if... Like, you, when, you, when you take something that is really reliable and form it into something, combining it with something that is not as reliable yeah. and is just from a completely different market standpoint, it becomes a very interesting clash of ideas. Yeah. Will it actually work in the long run? We'll see. That's, yeah, that's that kind is, of thing. That's still kind of up for... Because it's like, well, I don't know if it's been long enough yet to see if the soup is, uh, Supra, <laughs> Supra is really going to uh, work out as like as well from the practice. But they are putting a manual in it, I think, this year. They're rumored to, at least. Yeah, it's rumored, what I rumored know. manual. So that's pretty cool. But I don't know, I mean... I, I do really like the Z a lot, but I also really like the Supra, mainly just in the design. Mm-hmm. I, I, I really love a lot of cars, sometimes just based off their design, which I know it's kind of really more about what's under the hood, but I don't know. Like As an overall car, it's still... It's, it's kind of difficult nice. to gauge, because the Supra was trying to be something different, while the Z was trying to be a culmination mm-hmm. of everything before. So they're like... Their car is kind of built for two different reasons, but they're going up against. They're trying to meet the same goal, which is yeah, the kind market, of fascinating. And the market is 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 changing a little bit for um, that particular um, that particular group yeah. because the the Z kind of always was going after cars such as um, just like the some of the base model Porsches. Even they they were going after they were going after 
um, Mustangs um, in the American market because it had similar power figures. They were going after um, other drift cars and they were kind of trying to pioneer their, their own uh, brand image as well as the, um, the Z itself. Yeah. And so the Supra has always been known for this crazy car that has um, insane tuning capability. Yeah. And so the, the Z can be tuned, but it's not, it's not really known. That's not, it's not what it's known for yeah. primarily. It's known for just being a good drift car. Mm -hmm. um, and also just being a good old all around car. So yeah. 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 Like final thoughts on the Z. Um, I think, I think the Z, the new Z is coming out. Yeah. Is an amazing car. I think the market is um, really looking for cars like that right now. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be an overall win. Uh, yeah, I think Nissan's going to win big on this one. Mm -hmm. Really, I think they're they're probably going to do like as far as performance goes. It's 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 better than the Supra. I agree. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Yeah. Like the torque figures on Supra is better, but like, like who cares? Who cares, Dave? All right. Yeah. No, nobody cares. That's the answer. All right. <laughs> well, that's about all the time we that's have about, for today. That's about it. That's about uh, it. So so you know, uh, we just got to edit this video up a little bit. Uh, green screen out the calic that I had for about two thirds of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if that makes it in the final cut, uh, just know we were lazy. Uh, yeah. Thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all. Uh, if y'all haven't seen the previous video on the Z, go check it out. Yeah. It, uh, we had a lot of fun. It's well, really good. We had a lot. We of took fun. forever making it, but we also had a lot of fun making it. That's true. Um, I think y'all are really gonna like it really delivers a lot of the information and this is kind of our opinions and our thoughts uh afterwards so right thank yeah. y'all see y'all so in much for watching whatever whatever video we made yeah next see you so. see you in the, in the near future bye yep